that kitchen's awful hot. That new candy I'm making, it just won't ever get cool. Do you have to make candy today, Essie? It's just such a hot day. Well, I got all those new orders. Ed went out and got a bunch of new orders. Hi, if this keeps on, I suppose you'll be opening up a store. That's what Ed was saying last night, but I said no, I want to be a dancer. The only trouble with dancing is it takes so long. You've been studying such a long time. Only eight years. After all, Mother, you've been writing plays for eight years. We started around the same time, didn't we? Yes, but you shouldn't count my first two years as I was learning to type. <laughs> I think the candy's hard enough. Now, Miss Essie. Oh, thanks, Reba. I'll bring some in. Mother, I want you to try it. Finish oh! the second. Finish the second act. Yeah, finish the second more. Uh, what, Reba? I uh, say, did you finish the second act? Oh no, Reba, I've just got Cynthia entered the monastery. She was at the Kit Kat, wasn't she? Yes, well, she gets tired of the Kit Kat Club, club and there's this monastery, so she goes there. Oh. Do they let her in? Yes, I'm in it visitor's day, so of course anybody can come. Oh. So she arrives on visitor's day and just stays. You mean she stays all night? Oh yes, she stays six years. Six years? My, I bet she bust that monastery wide open. Do it. 
you write it? No, Beethoven. Lovely. Got a lot of you in it. I finished those candies this afternoon, Ed. Yeah? You can take them around tonight. All right, here's the finish. This is me. How's that? That's fine. Remember when colon cough comes, will you? Oh! Why don't you and Essie have a baby, Ed? I was just thinking about it the other day. I don't know. We could have one if you wanted to. Uh, how about it, Essie? You want to have a baby? Oh, I don't know. I'm lonely if Grandpa is. Uh, let's ask him later. Diploma and get their diploma 
And then along about 40 years from now, suddenly say, where am I? Hello, Grandpa. Have a nice day. Hello, have a nice day. And don't I even get kissed? Well, I'll take a tomato, too. It could have used a couple of these this afternoon. Father? Nothing. Mother? No thanks, dear. You play something, Ed. Did you get the letter that came for you, Grandpa? A letter for me? I don't know anybody. It was for you, though. Had your name on it. Oh, that's funny. Where is it? Oh, I don't know. Where's Grandpa's letter, Mother? Uh, what, dear? Where is that letter that came for Grandpa last week? Oh, I don't know. I remember seeing the kittens on it. Well, who was it from? Did you notice? Yes, it was on the outside. Well, who was it? The United States government. Oh, really? Wonder what they wanted. There was a couple of them before that from the same people. Well, if any more come, I wish you'd give them to me. Yes, Grandpa. Yeah, I think I'd go out to Westchester tomorrow and do a little snake hunting. God is the state. The state is God. What's that? Huh? Uh, God is the state. The state is God. Who says that? Trust me. Oh, that's all right. I thought you said it. It's nice for printing, you know? Good and short. G-O-D. into the palace and kissed her mother and her father and her grandfather. Hello, darling. Hi, Grandpa. And they turn into the Sycamore family. Surprise? Oh, Alice, I like it. Do you? It's new, isn't it? Looks nice and summery. Where'd you get it? Oh, I took a walk during lunch hour. You've been taking a lot of walks recently. It is the second new dress this week. I just like to frighten up the office once in a while. I'm known as the Kate Francis of Curvy and Co. So, what's new around here in the way of plays, snakes, ballet dancing, or, or fireworks? Why, Dad, I'll bet you've been down in that cellar all day. Huh? I'm going back to my work play, Alice. Oh, really, Mother? Ed, play Alice that Beethoven thing that you wrote. <laughs> you know, you can mail a letter all the way to Nicaragua now for two pesetos. Thank you. 
right. Uh, what can we do for you, sir? Does a Mr. Martin Badajo live here? Oh, yes, that's me. Where, Mr. Badajo? The government wants to talk to you about a little matter of income tax. Income tax? If you mind, if I sit down. Oh, no, no, wait. Come right on in. Thank you. Mother. How do you do? And that's Mr. Sycamore. How do you do? And Alice's grandfather. 
nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And Alice's sister, Effie. How do you do? And Effie's husband. Hi. Oh, how do you do? There. And now you know all of us. Mr. Kirby, give me your hat and make yourself right at home. Thank you.
at any theater gives me a thrill. <laughs> well, it was so nice, Tony. I, I hate to have it over. Oh, is it over? Do I have to go right away? Not if you don't want to. I don't. Would you like a cold drink? Wonderful. I'll see what's in the icebox. Want to come along? I'd follow you to the ends of the earth. Oh, just the kitchen is enough. <laughs> Why, I like it. You've done it very simply, haven't you? Why, yes. We don't know what to do, Empire or New Greece. So you settled for Frigidaire. <laughs> yes, it's so easy to live with. Lucky you're not hungry, Mr. Kirby. A nice box full of cornflakes, that gives you a rough idea of the sycamores. Uh, of course, how are you supposed to use these bottle openers? I never did. Uh, all over my coat. Uh, I'll take mine in the glass. There you are, a foaming beaker. Anyhow, it's cold. Now, if you'll please be seated, I'd like to offer a toast. We are seated. Miss Sycamore, to you. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. To you. You know something? What? I wouldn't trade one minute of this evening for all the rice in China. Really? Cross my heart. Is there much rice in China? Terrific. Didn't you read The Good Earth? <laughs> <sighs> Well, I suppose I ought to go. Is it very late? Very. I don't want to go. I don't want you to. All right, I won't. <laughs> when do you get your vacation? Last two weeks in August. I might take mine then, too. Really? What are you going to do? I, I don't know. I hadn't thought much of it. Going away, do you think? I don't think so. I love the city in the summertime. I do, too. Really? But you, you usually go up to Maine, don't you? That's right. Oh, but... I'm sure I would like the city in the summertime if... Oh, you know what I mean, Alice. I'd love it if you were here. I'd love it if you were here too, Tony. You know what you're saying, don't you? What? That you'd rather spend the summer with me than anybody else. Was I? Well, if it's true about the summer, how would you feel about the winter? Yes, I'd like that. Then there's spring and autumn. If you could see your way clear about those, Miss Sycamore? I might. I guess that's the whole year. We haven't forgotten anything, have we? No. Well, then. Is that you, Alice? Oh, what time is it? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Kirby. I, I didn't know. That is, I didn't expect anybody here. Uh, not at all, Mrs. Sycamore. No, Mother. Uh, I just came down for a manuscript. Then you can go right ahead. Uh, here it is. Sex takes a holiday. <laughs> well, good night, Tony. Uh, good night, Mrs. Sycamore. Oh, I think, you can, I think you can call me Penny, right, Alice? At least I hope so. What's that? Don't worry, that's just father. Oh, this time of night? Any time of night and any time of day. You know, you're more beautiful, more lovely, more adorable than anyone else in the whole world. Don't, Tony. What? My dear, just because your mother, all mothers are like that, Alice, and Penny's a darling. You see, I'm even calling her Penny. I don't mean that. Look. This is something I should have told you a long time ago, but I didn't have the courage. I let myself be swept away because I loved you so. Darling. No, Tony, let me make this clear to you. You're of a whole different world, a whole different kind of people, and <clears throat> your family and mine just wouldn't work, Tony. <laughs> I don't mean money or sorcery, that's just silly, but it just wouldn't work, Tony. It just wouldn't work. All right, I'm sure. She can't get it. That's why they pay her all that money, because she can't dance. Well, I don't call that dancing what she does. Oh, hello. How was the ballet? It was fine, Nessie. Wonderful. Oh, uh, hello there. Hello. Look, what do you people think? Ed and I just saw Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Do you think she can dance, Mr. Kirby? Why, yes, I always thought so. What does she do, anyhow? Now look, you're Fred Astaire and I'm Nessie, Mr. please. I only need to use it for a minute. Now look, Mr. Okay, Kirby. Yeah, we all agree. You're just as good as Ginger Rogers, Essie. You see, Ed? Yeah, hey, come on, Essie. We're butting in here. Oh, but they've been together all evening. Okay, good night, Mr. Kirby. Good night, Alice. Good night, Mrs. Carmichael. Good night. Uh, Essie, did you ask Grandpa about us having a baby? Oh, yes. He said go right ahead. Awesome. <laughs> Do you see? That's what it would be like. Oh, I didn't mind that. Anyhow, we're not going to live with your family. It's just you and I. It's never quite that, Tony. I love them. I love them deeply. And, and some people could break away, but I couldn't. I know they do rather strange things, but they're gay and they're fun. And I don't know, there's a type of nobility about them. Alice, 
You talk as though only you could understand them. That's not true. Why, every family has got curious little traits. What of it? My father raises orchids at $10,000 a bowl. Is that sensible? My mother believes in spiritualism. That's just as bad as your mother writing plays, isn't it? It goes deeper than that, Tony. Your mother believes in spiritualism because it's fashionable, and your father raises orchids because he can afford to. My mother writes plays because eight years ago a typewriter was delivered here by a mistake. Darling, what of it? And, and look at Grandpa. He, 35 years ago, he just quit business, started up to his office one day and came right back down again. He just quit. He could have been a rich man, but he said it took too much time. So for 35 years, he's just collected snakes and, and gone to circuses and commencements, and it never occurs to any of them. Hello there, children. Good evening, Mr. Vanderhoff. Hi, Grandpa. How's the weather? It looks like a nice summer evening. Yes, it's lovely, Grandpa. Well, I'm off. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Kirby. I've got a date with the policeman on the corner. Policeman? Oh, we've got a standing date at 12.30 every night. You've known him since he was a little boy. He's really a policeman. But after he graduated, he told me, you know, I don't like it so much. So he decided that maybe he wanted to be a doctor. But then he changed his mind again and went back to being a policeman. So I said, that's perfectly all right. You do what you need to do. I said, how do you like my new hat? It's very nice, Mr. Vanderhoff. Yeah, I like it. The government gave it to me. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I didn't know you folks was in here. It's all right, Donald. Yeah. Reba kind of fancied some candy and I... Oh, there it is. Oh, you all don't want it, do you? No, Donald. Thanks. Did you have a nice evening? Yes, Donald. Nice dinner? Yes, Donald. Was the ballet nice? Yes, Donald. That's nice. <laughs> now, do you see? Could you explain Donald to your father? Could you explain Grandpa? You couldn't, Tony. You couldn't. There's only one thing that matters that makes any sense at all. You love me. But, Tony, I know so well. But, darling, don't you think other people have had the same problem? Everybody's got a family. But not like mine. That doesn't stop people who love each other. Darling, darling, won't you trust me and go on loving me and forget everything else? How can I? Because nothing can keep us apart. You know that. You must know it. They want you to be happy, don't they? They must. Of course they do, but they can't change. I wouldn't want them to change. They won't have to change. They're charming, lovable people just as they are. Everything will work out. You're worrying about something that may never come up. Oh, Tony, am I? All that matters right now is that we love each other. That's so, isn't it? Yes. Well, then... No, I'd like to see a little gay here on here. Young gentlemen calling and getting engaged and everything. Well, what do I say? Well, first you thank the young man for getting engaged to you. Thank you, Mr. Kirby, for getting engaged to me. And then you tell him what it was about him that first took your girlish heart. The back of your head. Huh? huh? It wasn't your money or your charm. It was the back of your head. I just liked it. What happened when I turned around? Oh, I got used to it after a while. <laughs> Oh, Alice, think of it. We're pretty lucky, aren't we? I know I am. I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I know I'm not exactly unlucky myself. Oh, dear. I suppose I ought to. Good night, Alice. Until tomorrow. Good night, Tony. Isn't it wonderful we work in the same office? Otherwise, I'd be hanging around here all day. Wouldn't it be funny tomorrow in the office, going on and seeing each other as though nothing had happened? Thank God I'm Vice President. I can dictate to you all day. Dear Miss Sycamore, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, Tony, you're such a fool. Why don't you meet me at the drugstore in the morning before you go out to the office? I'll have millions of things to say to you. <laughs> all right. And then lunch, and then dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, Tony, what will they say? Well, it's got to come out sometime. In fact, if you know good house talk, I'd like to do a little shouting. <laughs> Mr. DePeno, we did a good night's work. That's what, 500 black hunters, 300 willow trees, and eight dozen junior cave robbers. Oh, pretty good. Oh, hello, Alice. You just come in? No, Father, I've been home quite a while. Uh, did you have a nice evening? I had a lovely evening, Father. Oh, Sid, I'd like you to take a look at this new fire we just made. Could you turn off the lights, Mr. DePeno? My house gets the full effect. Oh, what, Father? <sighs> take a look at this new fire. It's beautiful. Beautiful? Yes, it is 
mind my mentioning this, but you don't drink while you're acting, do you, Miss Wellington? I'm glad you brought it up. Once I pray often, I never have to drink. The minute I enter stage door, the ball gets put away until intermission. You've been on the stage a long time, Miss Wellington. All my life, I've played everything. Ever sleep on my heart? Oh, yes. I saw it too. Good job. <laughs> my, hot night, ain't it? You want me to open the window, Miss Wellington? No, hell with the weather. Say, she's cute. <laughs> she, she's just like, she's, she's, she's just acting, Ruby. That's all, she don't mean anything. Floating, 
He's so wonderful, Grandpa. Why, just seeing him, you don't know what it does to me. Just seeing him, mm hmm? Just seeing him for lunch and for dinner and until 4 o'clock in the morning and then 9 o'clock next morning, you're at the office again and there he is. Just seeing him, mm. I don't care. I'm in love. Reba! Reba! Oh, so nice, isn't it? Nice to see her so happy. Yes, and you know, I remember when I was engaged to Paul, how happy I was. I still feel that way. Oh, I know. Nice the way Ed and Nessie get along, too, isn't it? And Donald and Reba, even though they're not married. Do you ever suppose Mr. DePinna will marry anybody, Grandpa? Oh, well, there is Miss Wellington. Oh, dear! I wish she'd wake up if we're going to read the play tonight. Mrs. Sycamore, look what I found. Remember? Oh, my! It's my painting of you as the discus thrower. Look, Grandpa. Oh, yes, I remember it. Shay, you've gone kind of bald, haven't you, Mr. DePinna? Is it very noticeable? There's still a lot right here. Well, it's been a long time, Grandpa. Just before I stopped painting. Let me see. That's, that's eight years. Too bad you never finished it, Mrs. Sycamore. And you know, I really wanted to, but I just started to write a play one day, and that was that. I never painted again. And just as well, too. I was going to have to strip next. My goodness, what about that day I came to deliver the ice that I was going to stay here for eight years? Oh, the milkman was here for five, but just ahead of you. Well, say, why did he leave anyhow? I forget. Oh, he didn't leave. He died. Oh, yes. He was such a nice man. Do you, did you remember the funeral, Grandpa? It was kind of hard to, to get a certificate because we never knew his name. What was the name we finally gave him? Martin Vanderhoff. We gave him your name. Oh, yeah, I remember that. It was really a lovely idea because he never would have gotten all those flowers otherwise. Oh, well, it certainly was, and it didn't hurt me any. Haven't been bothered with mail anymore and haven't had a telephone call from that day to this. <laughs> yes, it really was a wonderful idea. I wish you finished it sometime, Mrs. Sycamore. I'd kind of like to have it. You know what, Mr. DePinna? I'll do some work on it right tonight. Say, will you? Well, I don't think she's going to wake up anyhow. Now, you go down into the cellar and put your costume on and bring up the easel. Is it still down there? I think so. Now, where did I put my palette and brushes? Remeshka! My little Remeshka! <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Golenko. Oh, hello, Mr. Kolenkov. Essie's in the kitchen. Madame Sikmar. Yeah. Oh, oh my! <laughs> Confidentially, she stinks! 
Well, as long as she's having fun. You sure do tickle Reba, Mr. Cohenkoff. She's laughing her head off out there. A great one. Colonel, what do you think of the Soviet government? What, Mr. Cohenkoff? I withdraw the question. Uh, what do you think of this government? Oh, I like it fine. I'm on relief, you know? Oh, yes, sir. Do you like it? Yes, sir, it's fine. Only thing is, you gotta go around to the place every week to get it. And sometimes you gotta stand in line pretty near half an hour. Government ought to be run better than that, don't you think, Grandpa? Well, the government ought to stop sending me letters. It wants me to be at the United States Marshal's office Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. Take a look at this. Ah! Income tax. They have got you, Grandpa. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to pay them a lot of money as to keep Donald on relief. You don't say, Grandpa. You going to pay it from now on? Oh, well, that's what they want. You mean I can come right here and get it instead of waiting in that line? Oh, no, Donald. I'm afraid you'll still have to waste a full half hour of your time every week. Well, I don't like it. It breaks up my week. He should have been in Russia when the revolution came. Then he would have stood in line, a bread line. Ah, oh, Grandpa, what have they done to Russia? Think of it, the Grand Duchess Olga Katrina, a cousin of the Tsar. She is a waitress in child's restaurant. I ordered the baked beans from her only yesterday. It broke my heart. Oh, crazy world, Grandpa. Oh. Well, the world's not so crazy, Cole and Cobb. It's the people in it. Life's pretty simple if you just relax. How can you relax in times like this? Well, there wouldn't be times like this if they'd relax. That's just my point. Life's kind of beautiful if you just let it come to you. But the trouble is, people forget that. I know I did. I was right in the thick of it. Scratching and climbing and clawing in regular jungle. And then one day it just kind of struck me. I wasn't having any fun. So you did what? Just relaxed. 35 years ago, that was. And I've been a happy man ever since. Good evening, Mr. Goldcock. Ah, oh, Miss Alice! Never had I seen you to present my congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Goldcock. May I be very happy and have many children. That is my prayer to you. That's quite a thought. <laughs> But there is plenty of that. And soon Stalin will take that away too, my time, Grandpa. <laughs> Seems so nice to get into my art things again. They look all right, don't they, Grandpa? Oh, yes, indeed. You are a breath of Paris, Madame Sycamore. Why, thank you, Mr. Kolenkov. I didn't know you was working for the WBA. Oh, no, Donald. You see, I used to pay all it the time. It happened again! There was a fellow following me every place I went! Nonsense, Ned. It's just your imagination. No, it isn't. It happens every time I go out to deliver candy. Well, maybe he just wants a piece of candy. It's all right for you to laugh, Grandpa, but he keeps following you. You do not know what following is. In Russia, everybody is followed. I was followed right out of Russia. You see, Ed? It's just your imagination. Well, maybe. Oh, here we are. Where do you want this? Over there? Uh, right here, Mr. McKenna. <laughs> hey, for tonight's legend, be you the first movement of Shahrazad. Okay. Has something happened to your figure during these eight years, Mr. McKenna? No, I don't think it's any different. Oh, yes, Miss Fullington, yes? Oh, oh, dear. Sorry, I'm late, Mr. Kolenkoff. I couldn't find my dancing slippers. He had a hard night for my bad robot, but Earth is only a chief. The first bird is gone. Why, that's wonderful, Mr. Kolenkoff. Did you hear that, Grandpa? Art is only achieved through perspiration. Yes, but it helps if you have a little talent to go with it. You only made two bullseyes last night. You got me better than that. You are ready? We begin.
seat, Mr. Kirby. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, tell me, Mr. Kirby, how do you find the business conditions? Are we pretty well out of the depression? Uh, yes, I, I think so. However, it all depends. But you think that things are going to keep on improving? Broadly speaking, yes. As a matter of fact, industry is now operating at 64% of capacity, as against 82% in 1925. Of course, in 19... <laughs> that may seem strange to you people, but uh, she's not quite accountable for Mrs. Sycamore's, as she came to dinner and was uh, overcome by the heat, did it? Yes, um, some people feel it, you know, more than others. Perhaps I'd better check if she's all right. Excuse me, please. Well, it, it is awful hot. Uh, you usually escape all this weather up in Maine, don't you, Mrs. Kirby? As a rule, I had to come down this week, however, for the flower show. Mother wouldn't miss that for the world. That blue ribbon is the high spot of her year. Flower show? Oh, I put a ribbon at a flower show once! Erasing! Uh, onions! Remember, Alice? That was a garden show, Essie. Oh, yes. Well, I think she'll be all right now. Has Donald come back yet? No, he hasn't. Well, I'm sure he'll be right back, and it won't take any time at all. I'm afraid you must be starved. Oh, no, it's quite all right. Hello! What's this? I didn't know there were any little children in the house. <laughs> no, that's mine. Oh, really? I suppose every man has his hobby. Or do you use it as a model of some kind? No, I just play with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Maybe you'd be better off if you had a hobby like that, Dad, instead of braiding orchids. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised. Tell us about your orchids, Mr. Kirby. You know, I've heard that they can take six years before they blossom. Think of that. Oh, some of them take longer than that. I have one that I've been waiting ten years for. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was waiting for an orchid. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Of course, during that time, they require the most scrupulous care. Oh. I remember... oh, here we are, Donald. Did you get everything? Yes, ma'am. Only, they didn't have any frankfurters. So I got pickled pig's feet. Uh, never mind, Donald. Just bring everything into the kitchen. Uh, Mr. Kirby, do tell them all about your orchids. I'm sure they'd love to hear all about it. And excuse me. Kind of an expensive hobby, Mr. Kirby, isn't it? Raising orchids. Uh, yes, but I believe that if a hobby provides one sufficient pleasure, it's never expensive. Oh, that's very true. Uh, you see, I need something to relieve the daily nerve strain. After a week in Wall Street, I wouldn't survive without something like that. Some of the men I know of yachts, just for that very reason. Why don't they quit Wall Street? <laughs> How's that? I was just joking. I think it's necessary for everyone to have a hobby. Of course, it's more to me than a hobby, but my great solace is spiritualism. <laughs> That's a fake. <laughs> to me, Mrs. Sycamore, spiritualism is well. I'd rather not discuss it, Mrs. Sycamore. Uh, remember, Penny, you have a hobby or two of your own. Yes, but not silly ones. I don't think it matters what the hobby is. The important thing is to have one. To be ideal, a hobby should improve the body as well as the mind. The Romans were great people. Why? What was their hobby? Wrestling. In wrestling, you have to think quick with the mind and act quick with the body. Yes, but I'm afraid wrestling isn't very practical for most of us. <laughs> I wouldn't make a great showing as a wrestler. You could be a great wrestler. You are built for it. Look. Oh! Are you all right, Father? Are you all right, Mr. Kirby? I, I, uh, where are my glasses? Here they are, Mr. Kirby. Oh, they're... Broken. Oh, I am sorry, Mr. Kirby, but when you wrestle when you wrestle again, you will of course not wear glasses. I do not intend to wrestle again, Mr. Kolenkov. I'd better sit down, Father. Why did you do this to him, Mr. Kolenkov? Why didn't somebody stop him? I think, if you don't mind, perhaps we'd better be going, Mother. Oh, Mrs. Kirby, please don't go, Mr. Kirby. I, I, I ordered scrambled eggs.
eggs and, and some plain salad. Oh, please don't go. I am sorry if I did something wrong, and I apologize. Oh, Mr. Kirby, I'm awfully sorry. If I'd been here, then I, I would It's quite all right. Of course it is. It's all right, Alice. We're not going. Well, that was exciting for a minute, wasn't it? You were telling us about your orchids, Mr. Kirby. Do you raise many different varieties? I'm afraid I've quite forgotten about my orchids. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Kirby. What did I do that was so terrible? I threw them on the floor. Did it kill me? Ladies! Mr. Polenkopf. Oh! <laughs> I'm sure dinner won't be any time at all now. Would you like some candy while you're waiting, Mr. Kirby? It's freshly made. My doctor does not permit me to eat candy. Thank you. Oh, but these are nothing, Mr. Kirby. Uh, just coconut and fudge and marshmallow Don't. and... Essie. Well? Miss Alice! Miss Alice! Excuse me. What is it, Reba? Oh, the eggs are dead on the sink. Make some more, quick. I got any. Send Don off for some. All right. Excuse me, everyone. There will be a short delay, but dinner will be ready in just a minute. <laughs> I've certainly put you people to a lot of trouble with my stupidity. Oh, no, not at all, Tony. Look, why don't we all play a game of some sort when we're waiting? Oh, that'd be fine. Mother, I've the I have an idea. I have a button that will trick with Please. a glass of water. Oh, no. All right. But I'm sure Mr. and Mrs. Kirby would love this game. It's perfectly harmless. Please, Mother. I'm afraid I'm not very good at games, Mrs. Sycamore. Oh, but even a fool could play this game, Mr. Kirby. All you have to do is write your name down on a piece of paper. Mother, I don't think Mr. Kirby wants to. Oh, he'll love it. Uh, here. You are Mr. Kirby. Write your name down on this piece of paper. And Mrs. Kirby, you do the same with this one. Mother, what is this game? I used to play it at school. It's called Forget Me Not. Oh, here you are. Now, I'm going to call out five words. Just anything at all. And as I say each word, you're to put down the first thing that comes into your mind. Is that clear? For instance, if I say grass, you might put down green. Just whatever you think of, see? Or if I call out chair, you might put down table. It shows people's reactions to different things. Do you see how simple it is, Mr. Kirby? Come on, Father, be a sport. Very well. I shall be happy to play this game. You see, Alice, he does want to play. Well, all right, is everybody ready? Wait. Do you see how they go? 
go together? Steak and potatoes? I just happened to think of it. Well, it's very good, Mr. Kirby. All right, bathroom, toothpaste. Well, lust, unlawful, isn't that nice? A honeymoon trip? Of course, and a sex male. Oh, of course you are, Mr. Kirby. Why, that's truly a wonderful paper. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You know, it's really more than a game. It's an experiment in psychology, isn't it? Yes! It shows just how your mind works. Now, we're going to see how Mrs. Kirby's mind works. Ready, everybody? This is Mrs. Kirby. All right. Potatoes, starch. I know just what you mean, Mrs. Kirby. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. A bathroom, Mr. Kirby? What's that? Bathroom. Mr. Kirby. I don't quite follow that, my dear. I don't know. I just thought of you in connection with it. After all, you are in there a good deal, Anthony. Bathing and shaving? Well, you do take a long time. I hadn't realized I was being so selfish in the matter. Please, go on, Mrs. Sycamore. Oh, really, I think this is a silly game. Uh, we ought to stop it. Yes. No, please, go on, Mrs. Sycamore. All right. Uh, where was I? A lust human. Human? Really, Miriam? I just meant, Anthony, that lust is, after all, a human emotion. Lust is not a human emotion, Miriam. It is depraved. Very well, Anthony. I'm wrong. Really, this is, this is a, quite a pointless game. Uh, suppose we play 20 questions? Yes. No, I find this game rather interesting. Will you go on, Mrs. Sycamore? What was the next word? Uh, honeymoon. Ah, yes. What was Mrs. Kirby's answer? Uh, honeymoon. Dull. Did you say dull? I just meant, Anthony, that hot springs were not very gay that season. All those old people sitting on the porch all afternoon, and nothing to do at night. That was not a reaction at the time, as I recall it. Father, this is just a game. A very illuminating game. Please, go on, Mrs. Sycamore. Oh, <laughs> this one's all right, Mr. Kirby. Sex, Wall Street. Wall Street? What did you mean by that, Miriam? I don't know what I meant, Anthony, nothing. But you must have meant something, or you wouldn't have put it down. It was just the first thing that came into my head, that's all. But what does it mean, sex, Wall Street? Oh, I don't know what it means, Anthony. It's just you're always talking about Wall Street, even when we're... I don't know what I meant. Alice, you have to dare to make me go to for dinner. I'm afraid this game is giving me a headache. Yes, perhaps we'd better postpone the dinner, uh, if you didn't mind. But you're coming tomorrow night, aren't you? I'm afraid we have an engagement tomorrow evening. Uh, perhaps we'd better postpone the for a little, the hot weather and I think we're being very ungracious, Father. Of course we'll stay for dinner. Tonight. I have a very bad headache, Tony. Come, come, Tony. I'm sure everyone understands. Well, I don't. I think we ought to stay. No, Tony. What? We were fools, Tony. To ever think this would work. It won't. Mr. Kirby, I won't be at the office tomorrow. I, I won't be there at all anymore. Alice, what are you talking about? I'm very sorry, my dear. Very sorry. Are you ready, Miriam? Yes, Anthony. Darling, you mustn't mind this. It's been very nice to have met you all. Yes, lovely. Are you coming, Tony? No, Father, I'm not. I see. Your mother and I will be waiting for you at home. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Dinner! Everybody, don't move! Oh, good heavens! Oh, how dare you? Why? What does this mean? Shut What's up! What's it all about? I demand an explanation. Shut up! Which one is it? This is him. What's it all about? Department of Justice. Oh my goodness, Jamie! Ed, what have you done? I haven't done anything! What's the boy done, officer? Does that door lead to the cellar? Yes, it does! Yes. Mac? Jim? Yes, sir! Circulars. 
You print this stuff, huh? Yes, sir. And then you put it in pocket candies and get it to people's homes? Oh, the love dreams! Didn't... But I didn't mean anything by that. You didn't, huh? Dynamite the Capitol. Dynamite the White House. Dynamite the Supreme Court. Why does the state the state is gone? Oh, oh, but I didn't mean anything by that. I just like to print, don't I, Grandpa? And now, officer, the government is in no danger from Ed. If printing's just his hobby, that's all. He prints anything. It does hate anything. Hmm? I never heard of such nonsense! I refuse to stay here and... Hey, let me get my pipe, Luna! Let me get my pipe! Shut up, you! We were right, Chief. They got enough gunpowder down there to blow up this whole city. I'm sorry, I'm Chief, no! Everybody in this house is under arrest! Oh, what? Oh, 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 shut oh, up! Oh, all of you! Oh, shut oh, up! Oh, oh, Anybody said to change her. She ain't been gonna be gone long, is she, Mrs. Sycamore? Oh, I don't know, Reba. She won't say. Ma, gonna be lonesome around you without her. How you feel, Mrs. Sycamore? Oh, I'm all right, Donald. Just kind of upset. Perhaps if I do some work, I'll feel better. Well, we won't bother you then, Mrs. Sycamore. Soon, train leaves at half past seven. If only she'd seen. 
see Tony. I'm sure he could persuade her. But she won't. He's been trying all day. Where is he now? Walking around the block again, I suppose. Anyhow, she won't talk to him. Oh, but only if she'd try to see it him. It won't help Penny. I suppose not. But I feel so sorry for Tony, too. Well, Grandpa? Hey, now, Penny, let the girl alone. But, Grandpa! Hey, suppose she goes to the Adirondacks. Hey, she'll come back. You can take just so much Adirondacks and then you come home. But it's all so terrible, Grandpa. In a way, but it has a bright side, too. How so? Well, for one thing, the expression on Mr. Kirby's face when he got in a patrol wagon and then when he had to take a bath with Donald. Oh. I'll never forget that if I live to be a hundred. And I warn you people, I intend to. If I can have things like that going on. Oh, it was even worse with Mrs. Kirby. When the matron stripped her, there was a burlesque dancer there. And she kept singing a strip song while Mrs. Kirby undressed. <laughs> I'll bet you Bar Harbor will seem pretty dull to the Kirbys this year. Oh, you need any help, Alice? No, thanks. I'm just going to press these. Alice, dear. Now, Penny. I'll bring the big bag down whenever you're ready, Alice. Thank you, Penny. Um, do you want some candy along for the train, Alice? No, thanks, Bessie. But really, Alice, you could be just as alone here as you could be in the mountains. You could stay right in your room all the time. I know, but I just I need to be alone for a little while. I love you all. You know that, but I just need to go away. I'll be all right. Father, did you phone for a cab? No, I didn't know you wanted one. I told Mr. Dependent to tell you, Paul. Didn't he tell you? No. Oh, he told me, but I forgot. Oh, I wish I was in a family that didn't always forget everything. That, that could live the way other families live. I'm sick of cornflakes and, and Donald and oh, everything. Why can't we live like other families? Roast beef, two green vegetables, and dwellers on the table, and a place you can bring your friends to without. Ugh. I'll see if I can do anything. Uh, Tony, Alice is in the kitchen. Thanks. Alice, won't you listen to me? Tony, Please. it's no use. Alice, you're not being fair. Please let me. Where is she now? She's outside in the street. 
I, I'm sorry, but I'm sure you understand. Well, yes, and in a way, no. And now, I'm not the type of person that tries to run other people's lives, Mr. Kirby, but the fact is, I don't think these two uh, young people have as much sense as uh, you and I have. Grandpa, can you please not do this? Oh, I'm just talking to Mr. Kirby. A cat can look at a king, can't he? Oh, uh, you want me to do that for you, Alice? You have a while before the train leaves, Alice. Could you please send a cab to 761 Claremont Avenue? That's right. Thank you. Alice. Are you ready, dinner? Tony? Hey, Mr. Kirby. I suppose after last night, you think this family is a kind of crazy. I would not say that, although I'm not accustomed to going out to dinner and spending the night in jail. Well, you've got to remember, Mr. Kirby, you came on the wrong night. And now tonight, I bet you nothing will happen at all. Maybe. Mr. Vanderhoff, it was not merely last night that convinced Mrs. Kirby and myself that this engagement would be unwise. Father, I can handle my own affairs. Alice, for the last time, will you marry me? No, Tony. Listen to what your father says. He's right. No, he's not, Alice. Alice, you're in love with this boy, and you're not marrying him because we're the kind of people we are. Grandpa. I know. You think the two families wouldn't get along. And, well, maybe you're right. But who says that they're right and we're wrong? Grandpa, I didn't say that. I only feel like Now, what should... I feel is that Tony's too good a boy to wake up 20 years from now with nothing in his life but stocks and bonds. How's that? Yes, mixed up and unhappy the way you are. I beg your pardon, Mr. Vanderhoff. I'm a very happy man. Are you? Certainly I am. I don't think so. Hey, where do you think you get your indigestion from, hmm? Happiness? I don't think so. Hey, you get it because you spend most of your time doing things you don't want to do. Uh, I don't do anything I don't want to do. Yes, you do. Last week you said at the end of a week on Wall Street you're pretty near crazy. Hey, why do you keep on doing it then? Why do I keep on? Why, that's my business. A man can't give up his business. Why not? I mean, you've got all the money you need. You can't take it with you. Uh, that's a very easy thing for you to say, Mr. Vanderhoff. But I've spent my entire life building up this business. And what's it got you, hmm? It's same kind of mail every morning, same kind of meeting, same kind of deal, same kind of dinner, same kind of indigestion. Where's the fun coming? Hey, don't you think there ought to be something more to life, Mr. Kirby? You must have won more than that when you started out. We haven't got much time, you know, any of us. Well, what do you expect me to do? Live the way you do? Do nothing? Well, I have a lot of fun. It's time enough for everything. Read, talk, visit the zoo now and then, practice my darts. Even have time to notice when spring comes around. I don't have to talk to anybody I don't want to. I don't have six hours of things I have to do before I get one hour to do what I like in. And I haven't had a bicarbonate of soda in 35 years. What's the matter with that? Hmm? The matter with that? Suppose we all did it. A fine world we'd live in, everybody going to zoos. Don't be ridiculous, Mr. Vanderhoff. Who would do the work? There's always people that like to work. You can't stop them. Inventions and they fly the ocean. And there's people to go down to Wall Street too, because they like it. But from what I've seen of you, I don't think you're one of them. I think you're missing something. I'm not aware of missing anything. Well, I wasn't either till I quit. I used to get down to the office nine o'clock sharp every morning. I lay awake nights for fear I wouldn't get that contract. I used to worry about the world, too. Got all worked up about whether Cleveland or Blaine was going to be elected president. It seemed awful important at the time, but now, who cares? What I'm trying to say, Mr. Kirby, is that I've had 35 years that nobody can take away from me, no matter what they do to the world. See? Well, yes, I, I do see. And it's a very dangerous philosophy, Mr. Vanderhoff. It's, it's un-American, and it's exactly why I'm opposed to this marriage. I don't want Tony to come under its influence. Oh, what's the matter with it, Father? The matter with it? Why, it's downright communism. You didn't always think so. 
Oh, certainly I did. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You didn't always think so because there was a time in your life when you wanted to be a trapeze artist. Well, why don't be an idiot, Tony? Oh, yes, you did. I came across those letters you wrote to Grandfather. Do you remember those? No. How dared you read those letters? How dared you? Why, that's wonderful, Mr. Kirby. Did you wear tights? Certainly not. This whole thing is absurd. I, I was 14 at the time. Yes, but at 18, you wanted to become a saxophone player, didn't you? Tony! And at 21, you ran away from home because Grandfather wanted you to go into the business. It's all down there in black and white. You didn't always think so. Well, well, well. <laughs> I may have had some silly notions in my youth, but thank God my father knocked them out of me. I've gone into the business and forgotten about them. Not altogether, Father. There's still a saxophone in the back of your clothes closet. There is, hmm. We'll talk about this later, Tony. No, I want to talk about it now. I think Mr. Vanderhoff is right, dead right. I'm never going back up to that office. I've always hated it, and I'm not going on with it. And I'll tell you something else. I didn't make a mistake last night. I knew it was the wrong night. I brought you here on purpose. Tony, well, for heaven. Because I wanted to wake you up. I wanted you to see a real family as they really were. A family that loved and understood each other. You've never understood me. You've never had time. Well, I'm not going to make your mistake. I'm clearing out. Uh, clearing out? What do you mean? I mean, I'm not going to be pushed into the business just because I'm your son. I'm getting out while there's still time. But Tony, what are you going to do? I don't know. Maybe I'll be a bricklayer, but at least I'll be doing something I want to do. That must be the cow. Uh, please ask him to wait a minute, Ed. Grandpa! Uh, do you mind, Alice? Mr. Kirby, uh, Tony here is going through the same thing you and I did when we were his age. I think if you listen hard enough, you can hear you yourself saying the same things to your father 25 years ago. Uh, we all did it. And we were right. How many of us, when we were young, would be willing to settle for what we eventually get? All those plans we make, what happens to them? It's only a handful of the lucky ones that can look back and say that they even came close. So, Mr. Kirby, before they clean out that closet, I think I'd get in a few good hours on that saxophone. I beg your pardon, but before I make the blinters, how many of you going to be for dinner? Your Grand Highness, may I introduce you to Mr. Anthony Kirby and Mr. Kirby Jr. Uh, how's that? How do you do? Before I make the blinders, how many will there be for dinner? Oh, I'd make quite a stack of them, Your Highness. You can't ever tell. Good. The Tsar always said to me, Olga, do not be stingy with the blitzes. <laughs> uh, pardon me, Mr. Vanderhoff. Who did you say that was? Oh, the Grand Duchess Olga Katrina. Uh, she's making dinner. Oh! Uh, speaking of dinner, Mr. Kirby, uh, why don't you and Tony both stay? Oh, please do, Mr. Kirby. We have all that stuff we were going to have last night. Uh, I mean, tonight. Uh, how about it, Mr. Kirby? It looks like a pretty nice dinner. And it'll give us kind of a chance to get acquainted. Uh, why not stay? How about it, Father? Are we staying for dinner? Why, Tony, if you'd like to, I care to very much. Aww. Aww. Now, if Alice would send away that cab, Mr. Vanderhoff. How about it, Alice? It's going to be a nice crowd. Hey, don't you think you ought to stay for dinner? I'm staying, Alice. Families ought to get to know each other, don't you think? Mr. Kirby. Tony. Oh, Tony. Darling. Grandpa, you're wonderful. I've been telling you that for years. Grandpa, here's a letter that came for you. It was in the icebox. Oh, let me see. Uh, government again. How do you do, Mr. Kirby? Uh, how do you do? Won't you step in the office, Mrs. Sithamore? I'd like to do a little dictating. <laughs> oh, I better tell that cab. Well, well, well. What is it, Grandpa? The United States government apologizes. I don't owe them a nickel. It seems I died eight years ago. What, <laughs> what do they mean? Hey, remember the milkman buried under my name? Yes. Hey, well, I just told them they made a mistake and that I was Martin Vanderhoff Jr. Hey, so they're very sorry and I may be getting a refund. Hi, Grandpa, you're an old crook. Oh, sure. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Vanderhoff. 
How did you say you escaped the income tax? You might have your friends you're going to eat. Oh, hello there. How do you do? Fine, fine. How are you? What has happened? <laughs> oh, he's just a vaccine. Oh, that's right. They say something. As far as anything else is concerned, we'll leave it up to you. Thank you. 